there are a few different ways to start your power surfacing model. You can import an existing model through File, Open. Power surfacing supports OBJ, FBX, and P-Model formats. P-Model is the power surfacing scene format. The imported models can be simple templates, such as this ring blank, or can be nearly finished models brought in for minor tweaking and the addition of SOLIDWORKS features. Power surfacing also provides you with several primitive objects as starting points. You can add them directly from the power surfacing menu from Create Tools. Or you can add them to an existing part file through the Creation drop down on the power surfacing toolbar. The two most useful primitives are probably the box and the torus. The primitives are created as extruded meshes on the top plane by default. You also have the option of extruding mid plane. You can select a different creation plane from the viewport's feature tree, including custom reference planes. And you can even set a rotation offset. You can also toggle between the control mesh, sub D, and the default sub D plus cage display modes during the setup process. When you are ready, you can choose OK to move into edit mode, or choose cancel to abort the primitive. You can also set the base dimensions and topology during setup. The secret to efficient sub-D modeling is to work with the minimal amount of geometry as long as possible. Best practice is to avoid adding segments until you actually need them. A third way to start your sub-D is with the sketch. This allows you to start with a predefined location and orientation. With Create from Sketch, you have two options. As a solid, the sketch can be extruded up from its construction plane, or both directions from mid-plane. For solids, sketches over four sides will use only the bounding box, so keep it simple. The other sketch option is to use the sketch to create a surface. This more advanced option will allow for more than four sides, but may require you to manually retopologize the resulting surface. Curved edges will be recalculated based on sides per 360 degrees, so once again, keep things simple to start. Whatever method you use to start your sub-D, you are defining the control mesh that is used to create the subdivided model. Defining dimensions, location, and orientation is only a starting point. That being said, I'm going to begin with the cube primitive. When I'm happy with its parameters, I'll click OK and go into edit mode. The newly created sub-D model appears with its control mesh displayed as a cage. If you are new to sub-D modeling, the most important concept to understand is that sub-Ds subdivide planar faces to create rounded surfaces, and the most desirable face is a quad. Let's investigate this further by taking a moment to look at the other viewing options. In the Command Panel, in the Viewing section, try selecting each of the three display options. With Control, the Control Mesh shows the base object, or Control Mesh, that is used to create the Sub-D model. Sub-D stands for Subdivision Surface. 
The SUBD display mode shows the subdivided model along with the control mesh's edges and their new locations. The default display, SUBD plus cage, gives you the best of both while the model is still very simple. It allows for easy manipulation of the faces, edges, and vertices from their control mesh locations while letting you see what the final SUBD mesh looks like. You can change the number of SUBD divisions displayed in the viewport from the viewing section. Note that this will not affect the finished NURBS object. Let's go ahead and move the mouse over the cage and model. As the cursor passes over the various elements or sub-objects, they are highlighted orange. In the Select Any mode, the default, you can select vertices, edges, or faces by picking the highlighted element. The selected elements will become blue. You can hold the Shift key down and continue picking, or Region Select to add to the selection. Dragging from left to right selects windowed, while dragging from right to left selects crossing. Note that as soon as you select an element and hold down the Shift key, you will only be able to select more of the same type. To remove from the selection, hold the Control key and pick. Releasing the Shift or Control keys returns to the Select Any mode. To restrict selection to a specific sub-object, you can choose its mode from the Selection utility in the Command Panel or from the right-click menu. The right-click menu has several of the most commonly used tools and commands on it. It can also be accessed with the S key. The two most common means of editing the SUBD are extruding and creating new edge loops. Power Surfacing has several tools to help you edit your SUBD. Let's start with the Extrude tool. Select a face on the mesh. Choose Extrude from the right-click menu or from the toolbar. The face is extruded out and the Extrude parameters are shown in the Command Options rollout over in the Command Panel. You will also notice that the context-sensitive gizmo has changed to reflect the new options. With Extrude, you can adjust the Extrude distance with the Distance gizmo, scale the Extruded face with the Purple Expand gizmo, and rotate the face with the Green Rotation Angle gizmo. You can also increase the number of segments with the Red Increment gizmo. To use it, click and drag up and down in the viewport, regardless of its orientation. You will see these specialty gizmos in several of the other editing tools. To complete the command, right-click, press the familiar green OK checkmark, or press the Escape key. The Transform gizmo, or Triad, reappears. If you change your mind, simply press the Undo button, or Control plus Z. Besides the usual constraints using the X, Y, and Z axes, the power surfacing triad allows you to move and scale on two axes at the same time. The fan-shaped marker lets you move in two directions, and the diamond-shaped marker allows you to perform non-uniform scales along two axes. Uniform Scale uses the small sphere at the center of the gizmo. The Triad, or Transform Gizmo, is also context-sensitive. Only elements relevant to the current selection will be available. Depending on the viewport orientation, you may need to adjust the view to access some of the gizmo elements. For many of the SUBD modeling tools, you will need to select edges in rings or loops before performing the action. One of the most common selections is an edge ring. You can switch to edge ring selection mode in the Command Manager or through the right-click menu. 
or if you are still in select any mode you can double click near the center of an edge to select an edge ring in select any or edge selection mode double clicking in the center of an edge selects an edge ring while double clicking near a vertex selects an edge loop with faces, the edge you select nearest determines which direction a face loop will be selected. Let's try another of the most commonly used tools, Insert Loops. With an edge ring selected, choose Insert Loop from the toolbar or from the right-click menu. As with Extrude, the Insert Loop parameters appear in the left-hand panel under the Command Options and the gizmo changes to reflect available options. Set the number of loops to 2. Try adjusting their position with the directional gizmo to slide them, or use pinch using the round end of the directional gizmo to move them closer or further apart from each other. You can also affect the parameters directly in the command options. Once again, press Escape, OK, or right-click to finish the command. Now that you've seen a couple of the tools in action, you may want to know how you can speed up your workflow. Holding the A key on your keyboard puts you into additive mode. Select a face and hold down the A key. Now position the cursor over the transform gizmo axis for the direction you want to extrude. Click and drag the distance you want your extrude to go. When you let up on the mouse button, the command is finished. The quick extrude also works on open edges, so if you are used to modeling with surfaces rather than volumes, you will probably find it quite useful. I'll delete a face to give me some open edges. Then select one of them, and extend it by holding the A key down as I use the triad to move it. I'll do a few undos and then cap it back up with a fill face from the right click menu or from the toolbar. With edges, the A key will allow you to drop edge loops in quickly. Hold the A key down, then hover over an edge. A red preview edge loop is shown. Picking will create the new loop. Now that we've got something a bit more interesting, let's go ahead and convert it to a NURBS object. When you are not in the middle of a command, the OK and Cancel pertain to the current sub-D editing session. The Cancel will discard the changes you've made since starting the current editing session while the OK button will convert the model and take you back into the SOLIDWORKS feature tree. The feature creation settings rollout contain a few options for the conversion. Quality should usually be left on the default, medium. Type gives you three conversion options. Normal, the default, creates an optimized NURBS model. Just as with most SOLIDWORKS operations, you will not be able to save the part file in sub-D edit mode. One-to-one -one planar is a quick conversion to let you save your part file without waiting for a long complicated conversion. One-to-one -one NURBS will create the NURBS conversion without optimization. Sub-D edges will carry through to the NURBS version of the model. Click the OK check mark to convert the model. Let's add a simple feature. Select a plane and create a quick sketch that will intersect the power body. I'm going to use a circle. Extrude the sketch and fill it the new edge. To return to edit the sub-D version of the object, select a surface or select the power body in the feature tree. Click and choose Edit Feature. Adjust the model 
and convert again. As long as the mesh hasn't been moved away from the extruded sketch, the features will be retained. Now let's try something that involves the power surfacing object directly. Select the power body and return to Edit Sub D. Select the face on the top or side and from the right click menu select Hard Edge. The face now has a hard edge, but more importantly because it was already planar, and we can see that in the control mesh, the combination will allow us to reference it. Convert again. Now we can create a new sketch that references the surface. Let's make a circle and use Extruded Boss again. Now go back into Edit Mode. Select the face again and move it slightly and maybe rotate it a bit. And convert. The circle was not set up for any relationships with the actual geometry this time, but you can see that the construction plane itself reflects the changes. Minor adjustments to the sub-D should leave your feature tree intact, allowing for quick and easy design variations or adjustments. Power surfacing brings a new level of ease to organic modeling in SOLIDWORKS. We hope this video helped you to get started with power surfacing.